Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuffs. And occasionally the things. I'm your good friend Bradley. And today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things as December marches on towards the holidays. We have many things to talk about on this Sunday Stuff and Things, including upcoming videos on the Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays channel. Some good ones coming up. Uh, we have a YouTube channel recommendation for you, a person within the pipe community. I'd like to recommend their channel to you. And that's actually uh, coming off of a question on hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. I would like to talk about crows a little bit. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, we're also going to talk about the game Cyberpunk 2077 and whether or not I will be playing it on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. We are going to briefly uh, touch on the Seahawks a little bit. And then, of course, we have your questions in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, which I have right here. But let's get into the first topic, and that is upcoming videos on the Stuff and Things channel and on Stuff and Things Plays. So, I just recorded the revisited episode for, let's cover this, Samuel Gawith, Full Virginia Flake. I have been looking forward to having this for quite some time. In fact, I was looking forward to it so much that I cracked it open about a week and a half ago, and it's almost gone now. So I had to quickly do the revisited episode before I had just gotten rid of all of it, just obliterated it. Um, so we recorded that today. I really like this, and I haven't had it for a very long time, and having it again is almost a problem because now it just makes me want to have it more and more often. I think the only thing preventing this blend from being, no, okay, I don't want to get too hyperbolic here. You know that Elizabethan is my favorite everyday blend. It doesn't mean it's the best blend in the world, it's just the one that I never get tired of. That's a Virginia Perique mixture, a vapor. I really like Virginias, I like vapors, I like straight Virginias. Samuel Gawith Full Virginia Flake could be my second favorite Virginia-based blend if it was something that I could get on a regular basis. But it is not, so it just has to be a special treat. But you should definitely check out the revisited episode that will be posting this Wednesday on Stuff and Things. Then, I already showed you that we have Sutliff Kringle Flake ugh, 2020. We also have Presbyterian Mixture. Ugh. There we go. And we finally got in Escudo. I can't tell if things are in focus or if they have light shining upon them. I've been waiting for this Escudo to come forever. It is finally here. So these are three more, well actually no. This will be a first impressions. The Kringle Flake will be sort of a, a special episode of first impressions. It's not gonna be a review necessarily where I try this blend with you. Maybe I'll wear a Santa hat while we do it. It'll be a nice Christmas special. Presbyterian Mixture will be a revisited episode, and Escudo will be a revisited episode. So that's a lot of revisiteds, because we also have Full Virginia Flake coming up as well. Um, we're going to pepper these in to the various videos that we have coming up throughout the weeks. There's more photography stuff I want to do. There's more music stuff I want to do. There are many things I want to do. There's some vlogging stuff I want to do too. But these will be things that you can look forward to if you're mostly interested in the pipe content. One thing I wanted to mention, and somebody left this as a comment, and I'm sorry that I can't remember who it was. Actually, a couple people did. Was it last year? I think it was last year I did a reading of A Christmas Carol. I was about to say A Christmas Story, uh, not with Peter Billingsley. This was with Eb uh, Eb uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, and it is the classic by Dickens. I did a full series reading that entire book. And you should check that out because it's getting to be the Christmas holidays. I will put a link in the description box below. Let me write that down. Christmas Carol link exclamation point star. So you should check out that playlist. It was back in the Stuff and Things Reads days. Okay, also. With upcoming videos, I guess for Stuff and Things Plays, I'm going to leave that until we get into whether or not I'll be playing Cyberpunk. So make a note of that, stay tuned, and we will discuss it in a moment. Next, and I don't quite know how to broach this subject, or how to uh, couch it, I guess, or what you'll even think, or why I'm even talking about it, but 
I like crows. I think I've mentioned that before on the channel, but I really like crows. And I guess I'll just try to briefly explain this little anecdote here. If you watched last week's video, and almost none of you did, but you should because it's very interesting about photography, I was showing you how I was take, trying to take some pictures of some crows and failing initially because I had just gotten the camera when I took those initial crow pictures and I was learning a lot about aperture and shutter speed and ISO and all that stuff, trying to get pictures of erratic little beasts that like to jerk around and are very quick. And I just wasn't getting my shutter speed fast enough and all that stuff. And then at the end of that video, I showed you some much better pictures that I was taking of crows. So you will know probably from that that I'm somewhat fascinated with crows. I think they're really intelligent. I don't think that. I think that's, well, I don't. It's not that I think they're intelligent, it's I know they're intelligent based on scientific research and facts. They're very intelligent. I think they're really cool. I think they're really interesting. I'm not a weirdo who sits around all day. Well, I was about to say feeding crows. I do feed crows on a fairly regular basis. I always keep a little tin of uh, unsalted raw peanuts in my car in the shell because they like those. You throw them out there for them. They like to, it's an interesting, experience watching them trying to get them out of the shells. They do it quite easily. They have large, powerful beaks. But anyway, I, I know I'm kind of uh, babbling here, but crows are cool. I like crows a lot. And there was a job that we did. I think it was right before we went into our first lockdown here in Washington. So it was probably early April or something like that. And it was on this particular street where there happened to be a lot of crows. And that's when I was first getting into bringing peanuts and feeding them. And as I was feeding them, I started picking out individual crows and sort of seeing their relationships with each other. And there was this whole just giant group that lived on this street or was always around this street. And there was one crow in particular, though, and I named him Crowby. And he was the largest crow, and I'm assuming it was a he because he was the largest and seemed to sort of be in charge. And all the other crows would come eh, within maybe 10, 15 feet of me as I was throwing the peanuts on the ground. But Crowby, he would come right up to me. Crowby would perch like three feet away from me on a little fence, and he'd give me that side-eye crow look like, hmm? ah. waiting for me to give him peanuts. It actually got to the point where I could hold a peanut out to Crowby, and he would take it out of my fingers. He was that bold, he was that self-confident. So we finished that job, and I hadn't been back to that site for months. But then recently, in fact, on Thursday, we had to pour a slab at that site. And now I have my fancy new camera. I've been practicing trying to take pictures with crows, and I thought, maybe this is it. Maybe Crowby will be back. And so I was pretty excited about this, maybe more excited than I should have been. I made sure I had some peanuts. I made sure, made sure I brought my camera. And when we had a little break in the proceedings, I went out onto the street and I started throwing some peanuts around. I didn't see any crows, but if I just threw a few around, I knew that before long a crow would come. Sure enough, one did. Then another one came. There was a little scuffle between a couple crows at one point. They were fighting over the peanuts. And then it was like they just went, all right, everybody, come on. And the entire crew, the whole murder of crows swarmed in and they were all perched around. It was just, it's like the birds, Hitchcock's the birds, where they're all on the power lines and on the, the fences around, like just watching. And I would throw peanuts to them. I was taking pictures, getting some good shots, but I wasn't seeing Crowby. And I wondered, you know, how long do Crowbys live? Crowbys, how long do crows live? I'd heard, I thought I'd heard like multiple years, like maybe even 10 years. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I was worried, like maybe Crowby isn't here anymore, maybe he is dead, maybe he ran away, not ran away, but moved away. Do crows stay in the same area most of the time? I thought they had as well. I had heard that. Um, but finally, towards the end, as I needed to get back to work, suddenly a crow swooped in. All the other crows kind of gave it room. It landed right in front of me, it gave me that look, and I knew it was Crowby. And I started giving him some peanuts. He came right up to me. And uh, I got some good shots of Crowby. Maybe I will insert one Crowby picture here. Well, 
what a handsome devil he is. I love he has this kind of like flat top look with his feathers. I don't know. I think it's fun. I really like crows. I don't know why I'm even telling you this story, but it's just something that I really enjoyed. It made me inordinately happy that Crowby was still there and that I don't know if he remembered me or not. <clears throat> I have heard that crows will remember people. They'll remember faces and things like that. So maybe he did. I'm the, the human with the peanuts. Peanuts. Um, but anyway, I was quite pleased to see Crowby. I'm thinking I may do a video of me just trying to photograph crows, talking a little bit about that sort of vlog style. And if any of you are interested in that, let me know in the comments below. Next, many of you have asked, and so I thought I should address it. Those of you who are fans of the Stuff and Things Plays channel have been wondering if I'm going to be playing the most anticipated game of the year, for most people, Cyberpunk 2077 by CD Projekt Red. They are the Polish company who did the Witcher series. Um, I played The Witcher 3 on my own, and that was a fantastic role-playing game, RPG. Uh, actually, I should have said RPG role-playing game because I'd be explaining that Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 is their new RPG that's been in development since like 2012, I think. So very anticipated. A lot of people were wondering if I was going to play it. I have posted a video on Stuff and Things Plays where I will, I discuss the reasons why I hadn't been playing it yet, why it wasn't on the channel yet, some of the issues that are going on with the launch of that game. So if you are curious about that and whether or not it will be played on the channel, well, it will be played on the channel. I'm not gonna keep you in suspense, but that will explain it in that video. It's already live. It posted yesterday, I believe, on Stuff and Things Plays. So check that out. Thank you. All right. We have to mention it. Ugh, the Seahawks. Remember in like week four or five when everyone was saying that Russell Wilson was a shoe-in for the MVP? When their offense was scoring over 30 points a game? Their defense was horrible, yes, but their offense was amazing. Everybody was crowing about DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, and especially about Russell Wilson. What happened? What happened to those days? Now is their defense finally seems to be coming on and at least becoming competent. Russell Wilson is making tons of mistakes. He looks flustered in the pocket. He's throwing interceptions. He's, he's fumbling the ball. I don't know what's happening. Everything is just, it's like there's this scale, offense up, defense down, now that the defense goes up, but now the offense is like dropped through the floor. And I, I, I ugh. They lost to the frickin' Giants. And the Giants have been doing well. I think they've won four in a row now. They're probably gonna win the NFC East, but still, they should be able to beat the Giants. And it was actually, oh no, it was their backup quarterback too. Yeah, it was Colt McCoy. I just, I thought maybe if I didn't talk about the Seahawks, and this is getting to stupid like superstition, which I don't really believe, but I kinda do, I guess, because I'm talking about it now. If I talked about the Seahawks, maybe that was bad. So if I didn't talk about the Seahawks, maybe it would be better, but then I didn't talk about the Seahawks and they had their worst loss of the season so far. So I don't know. They are playing uh, this week. They are playing the Jets. The Jets are winless. They better beat the Jets, but wouldn't it just be perfect if the Jets one win this year happened to come against the Seahawks? Ugh, I don't know, we'll see. I'm freaking out. I just don't know that they have it in them to make a playoff run this year. Uh, the Rams are coming on strong. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, last topic, and I think I got kind of the order wrong when I first did the rundown, or I forgot to talk about this thing at the top of the show, but what's going on with all the weird alien stuff lately? I am not a crazy person who believes that aliens walk among us or, among us or anything like that. But I certainly believe it's possible that there is intelligent life out there somewhere in the universe. The universe is too big for that not to be the case, probably. But whether or not aliens have been on Earth or contacted Earth or probed human anuses repeatedly, I find that fairly hard to believe. I would just think that there would be some evidence out there if that were the case. But recently, all sorts of weird UFO and alien stuff has been going on, and it's not coming from crackpots, you would think. It's coming from 
the CIA and the Pentagon and the Department of Defense. And it's coming from the former Israeli space chief. So just recently, or I don't know, it was a few months ago, I was talking about those uh, pictures that the Pentagon released, or at least that they acknowledged as being UFOs, or actually it was videos of weird objects behaving in a very strange manner that uh, video taken by fighter pilots. There was just another picture released recently um, that they have no explanation for of an object just motionless in the air. And now recently, the former Israeli space chief says that there is a galactic federation that uh, humans and aliens have been in contact, but the aliens are waiting for humans to get to a certain stage of development or knowledge before they reveal themselves that Donald Trump knew about it and he almost blabbed about it, but that he was stopped by the Galactic Federation. <laughs> now, did this man go in completely insane or what is happening? Why, why are all these things coming out right now? I have an article here from uh, the Times of Israel. It says, Israeli space chief says aliens may well exist but they haven't met humans. So this is now the current Israeli space chief. Uh, this is by uh, Nathan Jaffe. After retired space pioneer Chaim Eshed claimed aliens visited Earth, made deals with people, Isaac Ben Israel says he went too far, but fascination with extra extraterrestrial life legit. So the current head of the Israeli space, uh, or the current Israeli space chief is saying that the former Israeli space chief went a little too far. The chances of extraterrestrial life are high, and an Israeli defense expert who is claiming aliens have landed on Earth took things too far, but shouldn't be dismissed as a crank, according to the head of Israel's space agency. Haim Ashed, who headed Israel's space security program for 30 years, has been in the spotlight in recent days after claiming that aliens exist, that Israel and the U.S. have long been in contact with them, and that Donald Trump was going to blab, but that extraterrestrial beings of the Galactic Federation stopped him. Ashed said aliens conduct experiments on Earth, and there is a joint base underground on Mars where they collaborate with American astronauts. They ask that we don't publicize they are here because humanity isn't ready, he said. His ideas in space, including on aliens, are outlined in a new book written by author Hagar Yanai called The Universe Beyond the Horizon, Conversations with Professor Haim Ashed. According to Isaac Ben Israel, chair, uh, current chairman of the Israel Space Agency, Ashed went too far with his claims, which were published in an interview with the, Israel, uh, with the Israeli daily Yedioth Ahronoth. Sorry about that. But his seriousness shouldn't be questioned, and his standing as a leader in his field remains intact. So how could someone say things so crazy, but the current Israeli space chief is defending him and saying, no, he's not a crackpot. Uh, if, I had, uh, if I would have to choose one person to be called the father of Israel's space capabilities, it would be Haim Eshed, Ben Israel told the Times of Israel on Thursday. He said, it has become entirely acceptable over the last decade for serious scientists to believe in aliens as knowledge of space has increased. Is there intelligent life outside of Earth? Ten years ago, most scientists believed chances were low. We now believe chances are significant. This doesn't mean there's a galactic space federation and they landed on Earth. This is too much. But much of the scientific community believes the chance of detecting life in outer space is considerable, not small. As for his own view, Ben Israel said, I also think the probability is quite large. Still, in my interpretation, I don't believe there were any physical encounters between us and aliens. Why is this article in a major Israeli newspaper and why does the current Israeli space chief think, think that he has to comment on this and not only sort of uh, poo-poo the idea of a galactic federation, but then in the same sentence, defend the person who made those claims. It's kind of weird. Something's going on. I don't know what it is, but this is weird. And again, I don't think that there are aliens walking among us, uh, but this is strange. Why is all this stuff coming out recently? Maybe there's going to be some weird pronouncement um, that there is like some evidence of alien life and, I don't know, people are trying to prepare us for that fact. I don't know. I just find the whole thing strange. And uh, I'll keep you posted on these weird articles.
And now, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Thing. That is where I answer questions from you on the Sunday Stuff and Things. If you have a question that you would like answered on Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at S-A-T Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer your question. I also try to pick some from Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter, I will definitely answer your question on Sunday Stuff and Things. Um, and I'll try to get a few from YouTube as well. But keep those questions coming, gang, on Twitter because I appreciate it and it's always fun to answer these questions. We're going to start with one in particular. This is from Bishop's Pipes. Bam. I'm going to make sure I mark this as important with an exclamation point and a star. Bishop's Pipes says, and thank you for the question, do you watch other YTPC content? And if so, who are your favorites? Surely you've seen Northwest Pipe Smokers videos, Tom. And by any chance, do you know him, given you're both in the Northwest, same state too? Thanks. Well, Bishop's Pipes, thank you for the question. And this was going to lead into my YouTube pipe smoking community uh, suggestion for you all. I don't watch much pipe smoking content on YouTube. I used to maybe four or five years ago when I was first starting out, or I guess now it's about six years ago. Um, but I don't as much anymore, and I think it's because making these videos and doing this takes up so much of my time. It's less something that I'm exploring as a hobby, and it's become more of a job, which isn't to say it's onerous or anything, but I guess it's the difference between... I watch a bunch of videos about guitars and guitar effects and guitar playing because I've been super into guitars. I'm not a professional musician. So I think if I were, I probably wouldn't be watching as many YouTube videos about guitars and guitar playing. And not to say that I'm a professional YouTuber because I certainly don't make a living doing this, but the fact that I spend so much time doing this means that I take, there's much less time of, I take I don't spend as much time consuming it, if that makes sense. But I have nor seen Northwest Pipe Smoker, Tom. He does seem like a really cool guy. I've never met him in person, but I do watch his videos on occasion. Um, but there is one person who I would like to recommend to all of you. It is a channel called Put That In Your Pipe And Smoke It, all one word. And I've been getting some missives from this person. They're quite friendly, quite cool, and they have a series called Rory's Relish. and. I don't want to explain too much about what it is, but I think you should check it out. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Maybe, again, I will put a link. Link. Eh. And I will put that in the description box below. How can I succinctly describe Rory's Relish without ruining your first viewing? Um, it's a very charming, very interesting man discussing things that he enjoys, and he will highlight a certain thing in each video. There are other videos as well on the channel. It's very, the production quality is very high. Um, the information is very good. They're very charming, and they are worth checking out. Rory's Relish, or just the channel, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I will put a link in the description box below. We have... Uh, how long have I been recording? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, next. We have a question from Keith Bloom. This is via Patreon. Good morning. I seem to recall a video on holiday blends, and I looked and didn't see it. I apologize if you answered this, but what would St. Nick be smoking, and in what pipe? I have a holiday tradition of smoking in the house on Christmas Eve next to the fireplace, so the little ones know beyond a shadow of a doubt that St. Nick was there. The other 364 days, I'm on the porch outside. Your insightful videos have and continue to provide me with hours of entertainment and sometimes are the background to a new blend tasting. Our political views differ sometimes, but for the most part, we are usually on the same page. Thank you again in, and in advance. Keith from Cleveland. I have never done a blend... Or Thank you for the question, Keith. I've never done a blend review or a a video specifically about Christmas blends, but I have reviewed, I can't remember if I've done one or two of the McClellan Christmas cheer blends in the past. And if I had to answer your question, what would St. Nick be smoking? I don't know, maybe it would be Sutliff Kringle Cake. I haven't had this yet, but definitely uh, Christmas cheer from Sutliff. 
I think I did the 2017, maybe even the 2018, or not from Sutliff, from McClellan. Unfortunately, McClellan doesn't exist anymore, but I know a lot of people would take those blends and put them away. Um, so maybe if Santa Claus comes, you could offer him some Christmas cheer if you have any in your closet. Next from Uncle Rick. Uh, this is via YouTube comments. Uncle Rick says, I had a question about pop smoking more than once a day. Will it ruin your pop even after the cakes has been developed? Uh, or after the cake has been developed? I prefer Meerschaum for that reason in particular, smoking back to back. Meerschaum seems to be more forgiving in regards to heat as well. I've ruined my share of briar pipes in my earlier days of smoking pipes too hot. Love your show, by the way. I've been learning and enjoying your channel for a few years now. Hope to continue seeing more of different and unique pipe smoking blends. I love my vapors, but I also enjoy aromatics and Latakia, depending on my mood and whether or not my girlfriend is home or not. Anyways, be well, Uncle Rick. Thank you, Uncle Rick. Um... Will it ruin your pipe even after the cake has been developed if you smoke it more than once a day? I would say no to that. You don't want to just load a pipe, smoke it down, load it again, smoke it down, load it again, smoke it down. It depends on the pipe as well. Some pipes can take more in a day. Other pipes will be wet after one smoke and they will require a lot more time to dry out. A pipe like this, this is my Dunhill 1964 Root Briar Billiard Saddle Bit Pipe. I could smoke this baby. I could let it sit for an hour and I could smoke it again in a day. I could probably smoke it mm, thrice in one day before I really felt like I needed to rest it. Um, but it varies by pipe. This one, I can definitely do that with. Uh, my Costellos, I can do that with. Uh, my Savinelli Corallo di Mare, I could do that with. But there are some pipes like uh, my Peterson Spigot, I could probably only smoke once or twice in a day. It just depends. Depends on the pipe, but for the most part, you're not going to ruin it. Next and last, we have a question from Wax37. Wax says, <clears throat> um, I love Peterson's standard mixture and, and want to branch out to vapors. Question. Does Elizabethan smell or taste anything like the Sherlock Holmes blend? I have a tin of it and do not like it. The overwhelming smell of raisins is not my thing. I, I think it's the Virginias, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty new to pipe smoking, five months, so I'm trying to figure things out. Thanks for the question, Wax37. Um, Peterson Sherlock Holmes has a topping. And it's been a while since I reviewed that blend, but if I remember correctly, it is sort of a citrusy, fruity topping. So some of that aroma might be coming from that. Um, in a vapor, typically, no, wait a minute. He wants to branch out. Does, does any Elizabethan smell anything like Sherlock Holmes? Uh, I don't remember Sherlock Holmes smelling much like Elizabethan. Elizabethan doesn't have any topping. It does have perique, and perique can smell kind of raisiny, kind of pruney. But I don't remember, to me, if I can like resurrect a scent from years ago, in my brain, maybe. I'm thinking that I remember Sherlock Holmes smelling more fruity citrusy and like fairly obviously topped. Not, not the kind of raisiny, pruney, perique odor that I'm thinking of or that you may not know of since you haven't had a vapor yet. I would try Elizabethan. I don't think you're going to be put off by the aroma. It's, it smells very fresh and it smells good. It smells quite good. So, uh, gang, thank you for those questions. We like questions. Please send more in at hashtag AskStuffAndThings at SATBradley. Uh, but gang, we've just gotten to the best part of the show. And that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Now more than ever, as I speak into this very expensive camera, I definitely appreciate your support on Patreon. It helps pay for things like that. These lights here, that stuff there new equipment, all that good things, blends for review. In fact, these were sent to me for free, but I often purchase blends for review. So gang, thank you so much for your support. If you would like to support the channel, there is a link to the Patreon below. There is also merch that you could purchase if you are into that and I like stuff and things shirt. But every week we thank the Patreon supporters who support the channel at $25 or more a month. People like Ryan McFadden, MD of the North, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Cody Strigler, Glenn, David Gaudreau, Gus, 
Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, and John Leone. I would also like to thank the Maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Stroud and Bob McGee. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Do that. It's a good thing to do. Hit that notification bell. Uh, I think that, I don't know what that, I, I think it means that it'll show up in your feed. I'm not exactly sure because I'm not subscribed to myself. Uh, also, share, like, all that good stuff. It all helps. It all makes sure, it makes sure that these videos get seen by more people. Gang, stay tuned for the revisited episode for Full Virginia Flake coming up this week. And then we've got Presbyterian Mixture, we've got Escudo, we've got Kringle Flake. We have many things to check out coming up soon. More things about photography, more things about music, maybe things about crows. Stay tuned for some cool videos on Stuff and Things Plays, still continuing with Soma and maybe Cyberpunk 2077. Or yes, I already said that we are going to be doing Cyberpunk 2077, so check all that out. Also, check out the link for the playlist for... Uh, a Christmas Carol, which I have put in the description box below as well. I'm sorry I'm giving you so many assignments. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. <sighs> I'll see you later. <laughs>